Well, here we are again. I'm back with a quick tidbit of information for you. I've been busy aggressively searching high and low for the right combinations of solutions in order to remove Z-banding from my Ender 3. I've tried everything, including the kitchen sink, in order to smooth out this egregious Z-banding I was getting on my prints. But after all of this testing, I believe I finally found the right combination to minimize Z-banding artifacts on my prints and hopefully on yours as well. I'm scouring all the corners of the internet, leaving no suggestion untested and no product unpurchased. In order to understand this problem, first, we gotta go back to class. Z-banding. What is it? Why does it happen? And why should I care? There's actually a bunch of different terms that are often conflated online, but refer to distinctly different phenomena. Z-banding is actually a symptom of several other issues, but it generally manifests as a continuous pattern throughout the height of the printed part. It looks and feels like bands, but there's several other terms we should also be familiar with. Z-wobble refers to when the lead screw rotates eccentrically about its axis of rotation. This can be seen by looking directly down at the top of the lead screw. Z-ribbing refers to banding, but more specifically when you have physical ribs that protrude away from the part as seen here. Z-binding occurs when there's too much resistance between the lead screw and the lead screw nut. This is usually caused when the motor lead screw setup isn't parallel to the gantry. This binding or resistance can lead to partial or missed Z steps on one or both Z axis lead screws. These missteps will result in squished layers which look like ribbing as seen on this benchy, or slanted parts because the Z axis motion is asymmetric causing the gantry to sag towards the side that is experiencing the binding. With the lead screw perfectly vertical, it's pretty easy to push this nut down. But as soon as I slant the lead screw, it becomes really hard to push the nut down, nearly impossible. With so much resistance between the lead screw and nut, Z-binding is gonna produce more ribbing because it's physically squishing the layers together because of incomplete Z-steps. This was the exact problem I was experiencing on my Ender and what prompted me to start chasing this problem in the first place. So, referring back to Z-banding, you can have a continuous pattern of Z-banding or a non-continuous pattern that it's more randomized. Generally speaking, a continuous a continuous pattern of Z-banding is caused by mechanical issues with your gantry and lead screw, while inconsistent patterns are likely due to extrusion issues. So why do we get this banding in the first place? Let's go back to that Z-wobble. Each of these bands will roughly coincide with a full rotation of a wobbly Z-axis. So what's going on here? Why does this happen? Well, as the screw rotates eccentrically, it's actually putting lateral force on the gantry moving the gantry and therefore your nozzle out of alignment for the duration of the rotation that lead screw, which is why we have this consistent pattern. So for the rest of this video, I'll be focusing on the mechanical issues with the gantry and the lead screw. But first, some preliminary items, just for consistency's sake. I wanna to touch on leveling my gantry. I'm using this digital level to level the gantry. How? By measuring it against the surface the printer sits on. I zero it against the table and then measure the level of the gantry. We want them to be almost perfectly parallel. I adjust the gantry by manually moving the Z-axis stepper motors up or down until we reach zero degrees in the readout. So why do I do it this way? Because I can come back at any time and check the level of the gantry to see if it has moved at all. This allows me to easily diagnose issues with my Z-axis and make any adjustments if necessary. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's talk about some of the issues that could lead to the inconsistent banding we mentioned before. Number one. Clean and lubricate your lead screws. Your lead screws can get pretty disgusting over time. They'll accumulate dust and dirt from being exposed to the open air, and even brand new ones from the factory can be dirty. So start with some isopropyl and get all that built up gunk out of the threads. Doing this by hand can be an absolute chore, so I would recommend a tool such as this. 3D printed lead screw cleaner. This makes the process so much easier, and once it's clean, we can really see the difference. Now, for lubrication. There's a couple of different types you can use. I'd recommend a white lithium or a PTFE grease. You can also use oil as well. I'm using this Super Lube synthetic oil with PTFE, which is what I'll be applying throughout the rest of this video. Then I run the gantry up and down a couple of times to spread it all out. Number two, clean your nozzle. I actually replaced the nozzle with a brand new one in preparation for this testing. Then run a PID tune for both the bed and nozzle. Performing the PID tune will help to eliminate any temperature fluctuations that can lead to inconsistent extrusions. Speaking of extrusion, make sure you calculate your E steps and make any adjustments as necessary. Over or under extrusion could be contributing to your Z-banding. Make sure there isn't any unnecessary resistance on your spool or anywhere else between your spool and your extruder. Finally, step three. Make sure your X-gantry is all tightened up. 
We don't want any slop or play at all. Any movement that isn't in the Z axis or up and down can physically move the nozzle away from where it's supposed to be. So make sure all your bolts fixing the gantry together are tightened up. Next, you wanna make sure all the palm wheels are free to rotate. We don't have any play side to side. They should be able to spin freely with just a little bit of force. Finally, our eccentric nuts on both sides. We wanna tighten these up so that the rest of the play in the gantry is taken all the way up, but not so tightly that there's too much resistance against the frame. Okay, this stuff is honestly just a formality, so we can check all of our boxes. Now, let's get to the fun part, how I actually address the Z banding on my end. All this testing was done on my Ender 3 V2, but nearly all this advice will apply to any printer that uses lead screws to move either the gantry or the bed. All my test prints were done with the same settings and slicer and the exact same spool of filament. And any and all products seen were purchased by me with my own money. Nothing was sponsored, except for this video. <laughs> Before we continue, I'd like to shout out this video sponsor, PCBWay. I've personally used PCBWay to have batch runs of PCBs made for a previous project I was working on. But PCBWay doesn't just offer PCB prototyping. They also have a variety of other manufacturing services, including CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and of course, 3D printing. It's super easy to order. Simply upload your project files, choose your process and material, and get an instant quote. It really is that simple. So thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now back to the enclosure. We want our lead screw and motors to be perfectly parallel to the gantry extrusions of the printer. Now, what I noticed while going through this process is that the stock Creality motor mounts that come on the original Ender and the V2 do not sit flat on top of the motor, meaning that when you tighten them to the frame, they have a tendency to slant the motor towards the frame, knocking out the alignment with the lead screw and the gantry extrusion a slight draft angle that was likely a byproduct of the injection molding process. So step number one is to 3D print some alternate motor mounts. There's a couple of different ones available on places like Thingiverse and Printables, but the exact ones that I settled on in this video are available in the description. They use four millimeter T-nuts and allow the motor to sit square with the gantry extrusion. Remember the motors can get hot, so it's best to print them in PETG, or ABS, as PLA will soften up. So now with our new motor mounts in place, we wanna make sure that our gantry brackets are actually square. If the gantry bracket where your threaded nut screws into is not square and the hole is bent at an angle, it can put force in the lead screw causing binding. So measure squareness with a square, and if it's off, just bend it back into place with some pliers. Do this for both gantry brackets. Now we need to check and see if the lead screw lines up with the motor coupling. By performing the vertical drop test, which is what I'm calling the test to see if the lead screw naturally lines up with the hole in the motor coupling. Going through this process, I wasn't at all surprised to find out that it, in fact, did not. This isn't so much a test, it's just the process for assembling the printer correctly. When your lead screw is just hanging out, not attached to your motor coupler, as you rotate the lead screw down, it should line up perfectly with the top hole in your motor coupler, allowing for a nice snug fit. If you gotta force the lead screw into place, you're way off base. So first things first, loosen your Z-screw nut just enough they can move side to side, but there's no sagging up and down. Next, take the X gantry near to the top of its vertical travel, unscrew the lead screw from the top of your coupler and rotate the lead screw away until it's no longer sitting inside the coupler. You'll notice that your X gantry is gonna sag a little bit towards the side that you just unscrewed the lead screw from. Before you move on to the next part, we need to level out the gantry. So you can hold the gantry up so that it's level, or what I did is tie the gantry up with some string to make it level. If the gantry isn't level during the next step, it's gonna throw off the alignment with the coupler. Now with the top coupler screw loosened all the way, you should be able to easily rotate the lead screw down into place, resting on the bottom of the coupler. Rotating the lead screw down, it should be perfectly lined up with the hole. If it is, you're all good. And if it's not, we're gonna have to shim out the motor away from the frame in order to get this to line up properly. So I made these custom shims to move the motor mount out so the gantry bracket lines up perfectly with the motor coupler. Mine were 0.65 millimeters, but your mileage will vary, so you actually have to take the measurements and make or buy the appropriately sized shims. I used my shim measuring kit to figure out exactly how much of a gap there should be, but it doesn't have to be that precise. After you shim this side, then tighten up your lead screw coupler and go back and perform the steps in exactly the same way on the other side. On this printer, I have dual Z axis, but the vertical drop test is just as applicable if you only have one Z axis. Perform all the steps in exactly the same way. It's just that with dual Z, you've doubled your fun and potential problems. As a quick disclaimer, for me, installing the new motor mount and making sure my brackets were square allowed for perfect alignment and I didn't actually have to use any shims in the final build. 
but I left this step in in case someone would benefit from this information. Now it's true you can address these issues with an unlevel gantry with things like the G34 command in Marlin, but only if you have the motor driver for each C motor, or doing a mechanical reset by ramming the gantry against the top of the printer until both Z axes are level. But you're really just masking the root of your problem, which is too much force on either Z axis. You have to undo the binding to allow your Z axis lead screws to move freely. Now, doing this process for both sides yielded some better results as seen here, but I think we can get even better. Running some more tests showed I fixed my Z binding, but there was still that pesky persistent pattern I mentioned before. So let's take it a step further. With a motor, lead screw, and coupler, we want their center axes of rotation to line up perfectly. Due to a variety of factors, the lead screw will wobble, which is basically with the entire assembly free sanding, the tendency at the top of the lead screw to rotate eccentrically outside of its axis of rotation. In an ideal world, in order to perfectly transmit that rotation of the Z axis into linear motion of the gantry, we want this lead screw to rotate perfectly around its axis of rotation, or as perfectly as we can get it. That means straight lead screws and perfectly aligned couplers and motors. The coupler connector is one of the worst sources of this wobble in this type of setup, because on top of potential bends in our lead screw, we're also now relying on this coupler to line up the centers of the lead screw perfectly with the center of the motor spindle, and sufficiently hold the lead screw straight without slanting it to either side. And as you can imagine, this is pretty difficult to achieve. Now, this is not uniquely a 3D printing problem. There's entire manufacturing industries around the creation of different styles and types of motor lead screw couplers for different purposes, mostly for CNC machines, which is what a 3D printer is. One way to bypass this problem entirely is to have your lead screw as an integrated part of your motor, meaning no coupler required. This is actually how Prus has been tackling this problem on their i3 printers for some time. When we freestand the integrated lead screw motor and rotate it, we can see there's virtually no wobble. And side by side, compared against the motor lead screw with a coupler, there's a ton of eccentric wobble. But if you have a budget bed slinger, your Creality's, your Elegoo's, etc., you're stuck with the coupler problem. But that's okay. I think we can make do with this. Let's look at some modifications. So knowing we're gonna have this wobble in our Z axis, we wanna give the axis some freedom to rotate in the X and Y directions in order to most effectively transmit the Z motion. This can be achieved with these Oldham couplers. Oldham couplers allow the Z axis to rotate freely without over constraining it. They are made up of three dovetailed pieces that slide in the X and Y direction and connect directly to your lead screw nut and gantry bracket. These stop the wobble of the lead screw from being transferred to the gantry. During installation, I'd recommend applying some grease to each part. The only job this thing has is to slide back and forth. If it's not doing that effectively, it's basically worthless. Ooh, that looks pretty good. So in a previous video, I recommended the anti-backlash nut, and I still think they serve their intended purpose, but during testing, I noticed there was a slight reduction in Z-banding when they were installed. So I removed them for testing and replaced the brass lead screw nut with a palm alternative. The brass nut slash lead screw combination absolutely needs to be lubricated, but over time, the brass nut can degrade, leading to some play in the nut. The palm nuts are described as self-lubricating, which sounds nice as marketing fluff, but isn't technically correct. They just have a really low coefficient of friction and high abrasion resistance. So do you need to lubricate palm nuts? Well, Prusa explicitly says you should not lubricate the palm nuts or lead screws on their machines. Why? Well, the reasoning isn't given, but it's probably because the lubrication isn't technically necessary and it can lead to gunk buildup when the lubrication combines with the dust and plastic debris over time. So the question is, to lube or not to lube? Well, after cleaning my lead screws and installing the palm nuts, I noticed there was some noise during Z travel. Applying a little bit of PTFE oil along the length of the lead screw took out that noise. Just remember that with the oil, you'll likely have to clean your rods more often and reapply oil more frequently. Now, the stock stepper motors that come on your Creality machine aren't really designed to support force applied down on top of the motor spindle. So you can install a thrust bearing that helps to support the weight of the gantry on the motor while allowing free spinning motion. I'm not really sure if the thrust bearing makes a difference, but I already had to replace the stock motor mount, so I figured I would give it a try. But there is a slight difference in quality between these two examples. The only change between these two prints was the installation of a thrust bearing. So if anything, it can't hurt your setup and will likely protect your motors from unnecessary wear over the long term. So I'd recommend it. If you've looked into removing Z banding on your printer, you've likely come across these plum or spider couplings. These couplings have two separate metal couples that are held together by this plastic piece in the middle. 
In theory, unlike a rigid coupling, they're supposed to compensate for the lack of alignment between the lead screw coupler and motor by allowing the coupler to flex. I saw some setups that called for a plumb coupling and for the lead screw to be fixed at the top of the gantry with a bearing stabilizer, so all the wobble is basically focused at the coupling. During testing, the setup produced more noticeable Z-banding down the entire length of the test part. Removing the stabilizer improved the surface quality, and this test produced a part with no banding and minimal surface artifacts. So what about our lead screws? Replacing a bent lead screw. How do you know when the lead screw is so bent that it needs to be replaced? Well, most lead screw motor coupler combinations will have some amount of wobble and most of your cheap lead screws that come on your printer or those you buy online from places such as Amazon will be bent to some degree. But it's too bent when it starts to cause issues like this really bad banding seam here and the bent lead screw can't be mitigated by a flexible coupler. Really, it's that simple. If your prints look good, you don't hear any screeching sounds, your motors are not losing steps, then you're good and just leave them be. Keep them clean and keep them lubed. Now, this next suggestion is gonna surprise some, but bear with me. Removing the lead screw stabilizers at the top of the frame improved the surface quality of my print and reduced Z-banding. This was a little bit surprising at first, but after some investigation, it began to make more sense. Unless your lead screw is perfectly straight, meaning no wobble, the stabilizer at the top is just gonna over constrain the lead screw and cause binding. Looking at this, the stabilizer screwed all the way into the frame. It's putting pressure against the lead screw and across my testing, the bearing stabilizer created thicker Z banding and worse surface artifacts in every single test print where I had them installed. I even tried a flexible coupler with a bearing stabilizer at the top and this still produced noticeable Z banding. It is my suggestion that these belong in the trash and not on your printer. But I didn't really like the idea of my lead screws just hanging out all exposed. So I designed these lead screw covers that allow the top of the lead screw to rotate unconstrained, but also protected from snags or damage or dust. They also have a built-in physical Z-stop so you can drive the gantry against it and perfectly level it manually. Link in the description. But remember when we talked about the wobble problem? Well, curiosity killed the cat and my wallet. To test the difference a perfectly straight lead screw would make on park quality, I bought two of these combined lead screw motor units. The lead screw is incorporated directly into the motor, and when we look at this from the top down, the wobble is basically non-existent. These new motor units were mostly plug and play. I did have to swap out the motor cables and physically take the gantry off, but after testing, I found these new motors produce the best surface quality out of all the solutions and combinations of everything I tested. So is that my recommendation that everyone should run out and completely replace the stock motor lead screw combo? No, absolutely not, because simply the cost isn't worth it, but more so because I was able to get nearly the same surface quality with my old hand coupler setup. So what's my final recommendation for reducing Z-banding and improving overall surface quality along the Z-Wall's earprints? Well, there's three options. The first one that I would recommend is the Oldham coupler setup, which includes installing a new motor mount with a thrust bearing, using the stock rigid coupler, and replacing the brass screw nut with a palm alternative, which is optional, and installing the Oldham coupler on your Z-Gantry bracket. My next suggestion would be using the flexible coupler, which again includes installing a new motor mount with a thrust bearing, installing the flexible coupler by replacing the rigid one, placing the brass screw nut again with a palm nut. Or, finally, the third option is the combined motor lead screw combination, which is basically just installing the lead screw motor combination and using a palm nut, which again is optional. But because of the cost, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going down this route unless you are just an absolute financial masochist. Comparing the plumb coupler to the old hand produced nearly identical results, but in my entirely professional and not subjective at all opinion, I think the old ham setup looks the best and is definitely the best value. After all of this, I think the only way to see any further improvements in surface quality would be to switch over to something like a linear rail setup. But let's remember something here. Even with the perfect setup, there's gonna be surface artifacts on your prints due to a variety of things like inconsistent wear on your palm wheels, a gantry that isn't perfectly level, inconsistent pitch of your lead screw, bending your lead screws, etc. High precision is expensive. And fortunately for hobbyists everywhere, these printers are not. The design be built with imprecise parts and still give acceptable build quality. If you made it this far in the video, consider subscribing so I can continue to justify burning my own money for your entertainment. And as always, I hope you learned something and thanks for watching.